Hello, my name is Jason Dragon, and I'm going to have a video real quick on the, about this 2018 general election. So if you're like me, you probably have noticed that your Facebook feed is filling up with um, election-related content. A lot of politics, you know, vote for this person, don't vote for this person, um, going back and forth. You know, and a lot of it is kind of negative, you know, and of course, you know, just that's what Facebook is nowadays. It's everything Trump, everything anti-Trump, everything uh, pro and con. I, I'm just hoping none of this is says any bad words or anything. But if you look through my Facebook feed, literally 75% of the information on here has something to do with uh, politics. Except for this post, that's actually my house. Uh, it hailed yesterday, so that was really cool. So anyway, so let me tell you a quick little bit about me. Uh, my name is Jason Dragon. I'm an Arizona negative uh, native. I'm a dad of three really smart and awesome boys. The oldest is 11, the youngest is four. I'm a small business owner. I own a local computer store and recycling facility called Emerald Computers. I'm also a realtor and I specialize in commercial real estate. I live in Arizona. I specifically live in Congressional District 8 and I live in LD21, which is part of L um, Congressional District 8. I also live in the Peoria School District. I live in the city of Peoria and specifically the Acacia District within the city of Peoria. So what do I look for when I want to vote? Well, I believe in small government. I think the government should not be telling us what we can and cannot do to a much, to much more than they are now. Um, there's a lot of stuff they tell us what we can and cannot do now that they should not be in meddling in our business. I stand for freedom. You know, if, if you're going to do something, as long as it doesn't hinder or inter or harm somebody else, you should have the freedom to do it. I stand against most government rules and regulations on small business. Um, I stand against, basically I stand against meddling. And I'm going to, just for the fun of it, because, you know, why not have it? I'm going to show you a short clip, one of my favorite parts of one of my favorite movies, um, just so you can do that. And if uh, and I'd love to see if you in the comments if you can identify what movie this is. I'm sure many of you can. But here, just watch it real quick. Yeah. It's true that there are dangers on the other planets. So with so many social and medical advancements we can bring to the independence, why would they fight so hard against us? Metal. Really? People don't like to be meddled with. We tell them to do, what to think. Don't run, don't walk. We're in our homes and in their heads, and we have the right. We're middlesome. Exactly. Really? We're, We're not telling people what to think. We're, We're just trying to show them how. So, anyway, that's the way I feel that there's a lot of people running for office that they want to meddle, that their whole entire goal is to make government bigger, make government control more of our money, control more of our life, control more of our society, have more rules, more regulations. To that end, you know, there's so many uh, new rules. Hey, let's have a rule against this or a rule against that. Let's have a rule saying you have to do this or you have... You know, let's be specific. Let's say I have a rule. You have to buy um, health insurance. Or you have to not text while you're driving. Yes, I understand. Texting while you're driving is stupid. And you shouldn't do it. But we shouldn't be having a law of saying that, you know, you're going to be punished for doing this. And, and it goes a lot further because one of the biggest gripes I have with government is how unfair it is. And the number one way to make government unfair is in unequal enforcement of the laws. And when you have laws that pretty much everybody breaks and you only enforce it on a very selective few, that is a, a wide door into government abuse. It allows the government to go in there and, you know, if it's a, some sort of rule or regulation that most people don't abide by, 
Um, let's just say speeding, for example. Most everybody I know, you know, you drive down any road here in Peoria, and everybody's going 10, 15 miles over the speed limit. Sometimes only five. Hardly anybody goes the speed limit, but yet hardly anybody gets a ticket. But if they decide that they want to throw the book at you, guess what? The government has the ability to throw the book at you because you were speeding and you were breaking this law. So there are, have been cases in various times when people get the book thrown at them and on many, many different things just because the government's mad at these people. And that's what having all these meddling and controlling laws on the books. Yes, most people don't get hurt by speeding tickets. Or if you do, maybe once a year or every couple years, you might get a speeding ticket. But yet, if, if the government really wants to go after somebody, heck, they can give them a speeding ticket every day. It's, you know, that's, I'm just using speeding ticket as one of the meddling things. Um, another thing here in Peoria you know, every time the government wants a little bit of extra money for their fire department, they're just going to send a fire inspector in, and then they send you a bill for $150 into your business. And I think that's just totally unfair. You know, that it has to be equal. You know, so other businesses don't pay that, and other businesses don't have that thing. Anyway, I don't want to get too far off on a tangent. So what I'm here to do is we have our ballots. Here's my official ballot. I have not filled it out yet. I will be filling it out probably tomorrow and mailing it in. But I wanted to make this video first and talk to you about various things. So one of the very first things I'm going to talk to you about, um, just real quick for the local people, uh, Vicki Hunt versus Brittany Barback. Now, as you know, I actually was running against these two in the primary. And here's one of Brittany's flyers. Um, here's one of Vicky's flyers. Now, during the primary and for the time before, I actually got to know both of these people pretty well. Um, you know, I've talked to them about many, many issues, um, what they would do if they were elected. So I think I'm in a pretty good position to kind of give you a little foresight into what I believe these people will do. So... In my mind, I think Vicki Hunt means well. And for the most part, you know, she has her goals and her effort and what she wants to do uh, for the city of Peoria. And a lot of it is she'll just say yes to whatever the mayor says and say yes to whatever city staff says. Because on most of the issues that relate to the city of Peoria, I don't honestly think she really cares one way or the other. Um, but there are a few issues that she really cares about. She cares about her garden. She cares about a, a few benches and some other very uh, small projects here in Peoria. But I believe that she really likes to be a city councilwoman. And she likes to go to the meetings. And, um, she, and you know, she likes to help her neighbors out. I do honestly think she enjoys helping her neighbors out. And and getting the word out. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a little bit under the weather, so I'm just going my cough a few times. But in general, I don't believe that she's there trying to push a major agenda. She's not trying to make government bigger. She's not trying to meddle um, in our lives more than which the city has already done. But I don't think she really tries to stop people from meddling. And she doesn't really oppose these new rules. Hey, let's set a new rule on a texting ban. Or let's make a new tax on this. Or a new tax on that. I mean, she was in favor of increasing our sales taxes. She was in favor of a lot of various things. Um, so, in my mind, she's not the ideal candidate. But... She's not going to cause a lot of harm and a lot of damage in the future. I mean, I see there's a whole bunch of little things that I think Peoria needs to have fixed. And I don't think she honestly cares about those things and is not going to work on those. Um, I, I, I see there's a lot of issues with how of our, how our roads are designed. They're not very efficient. Um, I think that that could all be fixed. But... I didn't, you know, I'd like to work with her in the future maybe. And I, I do think that she is 
honestly, I think she is pretty much pro small business and she has done a few things to help small business. She really likes to focus on the the downtown area Peoria and the downtown area Peoria does need some work and it, it does need to get better. If you're not in the downtown Peoria, again, I don't think she cares too much about your business. Um, she, you know, she's never visited my business and any business I know of that's pretty much outside of the downtown area, I don't think she really cares. But that again, you know, so who's she running against? So she's running against Brittany Barba. I don't, you know, I had a theory on why she was running. Um, I'm not going to just talk about it right now because she personally told me that that theory wasn't true. Um, I do believe that she wants to be our city council person and she wants to do it pretty hard. Uh, she's a lawyer. I don't know how much, she doesn't really have any government experience and I don't know how much life experience she has. I mean, she's not even 30 yet. Um, from what I believe she's not, I mean, she might be, I don't know. I'm pretty sure she's not. Um, but the one thing I do know is, you know, who she hangs out with. She is, you know, her and Harold Tipperelli, who I'm not a fan of because I think her, we'll I'll talk about that later. Um, but, you know, they've been on, they've campaigned together. They've had events together. Um, they have done a lot of these various things together. And I don't think with all, all of that going on. And I think there's a, like her, one of her letters that she sent out, not this one, but another mailer that she sent out, she said that she was endorsed by um, Arizona First. And so, of course, you know, it's Google Arizona First. And I went onto their website, and Arizona First is a very much pro-abortion um, entity. I mean, she's going for a city position that has absolutely nothing to do with the abortion issue, but yet she's going to go out on a limb and be very, very pro-abortion and be backed by a group that's very, very pro-abortion. So, you know, I'm not a fan of that. I So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to be voting for Brittany. I am going to vote for Vicki Hunt. And I'm going to vote for Vicki because I don't think that she has, an, I don't think she has, you know, what she's trying to do is not going to really harm Peoria. I, I don't understand what Brittany would do at a city council level because everything that she's talked about on her flyer is all just about her experience as a lawyer and her experience as a family person. She doesn't say one thing anywhere other than being pro Old Town of what she's going to do. And obviously we know Vicky's very pro Old Town. So, you know, you're getting this, there's nothing else out there that you're even getting information on. So in that particular race, I am going to be voting for Vicky. I know there's a lot of people out there who uh, supported me, and I hope most of them will also vote for her. She did um, have a lot more votes than Brittany, so I think most of my supporters are probably going to vote for Vicky, and a lot of Brittany's supporters are not, I mean, they're going to still come out for Brittany, but with my votes and the votes that Vicky already had, I think Vicky's going to easily win this race. And I hope that happens. And I've also noticed that Brittany really hasn't done any marketing. Um, she hasn't even bothered fixing and putting up her signs since the primary election. So I think she's pretty much done with that. So now we're going to, and then if you want to know who I am, I'm also, I didn't mention it earlier, but I, as you can probably tell by now and where I stand, I am a Republican. I'm not only just a Republican, I'm also a precinct committeeman here in the, um, let's see, this is the Vogel precinct, and that's where I happen to live. So, so many jurisdictions. Anyway, so let me start going real quick. Um, going to um, maricopa.vote will automatically forward you to recorder.maricopa.gov slash elections. And when you get to this website, you'll be able to find out information about the election, where do I live, um, who are my current elected officials, uh, various community register resources. You can actually type in your information and find out whether you are registered to vote or not. You can also still become a poll worker. Yes, the election is only in, in like, what, 13 days, 12 days, and yet you can still become a poll worker because 
guess what? There's still about 25 percent of the um, positions are still empty. And I will tell you, you know, I've actually signed up to be a poll worker. I have my um, election day site manual right here. I'm going to be an inspector. I guess they said it's at um, 107th Avenue in Mountain View. So if that's where you vote, then I'll be seeing, and you're going to vote on election day, then I'll be seeing you on election day. So let's go down the ballot real quick about where I would, Wow, it's a really long ballot. So you got to make sure you vote both sides of the ballot. There are some important things on the back. We'll get to that here in a minute. But being a Republican, I, you know, I'm not going to just say, yes, vote for Republicans. Though I personally am going to vote for Republicans. I'm going to go down and tell you why I'm voting for these people. So first off, McSally and uh, Kristen Cinema. There's a Green Party person whose actual last name is Green, which is really cool. Um, they're not, they don't have a chance. <laughs> so let's not even talk about that. So Martha McSally, war vet, all this type of stuff. But she's much more of a small government person than um, Chris, uh, uh, Kristen Cinema. I, I always let's say it. Her name is spelled a little weird. So I don't think... I really hope Kristen Cinema doesn't win. I have seen her ads, and you know, both of these candidates have spent a lot of money, and both of these candidates, and along with independent expenditures, have attacked each other, and there's a lot of negativity going on. Um, I don't like it. I don't like negativity on both sides, but there has also been some good positive messages from both sides, and. You know, after watching those, I do think, unfortunately, that um, Kristen Cinema has said some things disparaging against Arizona, disparaging against the voters of Arizona, the legislature of Arizona. Um, obviously, she comes from a point of being frustrated with not getting her agenda done, but I don't think her agenda should be done. Um, she's definitely much more of a big government person than she's been uh, portrayed to be over the last 10 years. If you look at, I mean, maybe she has grown up and changed her mind. And I have noticed that as people do get older, they do become more conservative and usually more Republican. And maybe she has truly been. But on the same level, you know, she's still for universal health care. She still stands for open borders. She still stands for more taxes. So I'm not going to go much more into that. Uh, next, um, there's Debbie Lesko versus Hero Tipinelli. Hero Tipinelli. Um, I've met both these people. I've met Debbie Lesko many, many times. I've been to Debbie's house. Um, she's been to my store a couple times. And, um, you know, she's. I consider her a friend. And I definitely support Debbie Lesko in this race. I think that, um, I think she's going to easily beat Hero Tipinelli in this race. Um, she's already in the job. She's the incumbent. Um, she won once, and I think she'll just do it again. Next is governor. And again, I'm going to go for the Republican, Doug Ducey. He's been our governor for the last four years. I have met him on multiple occasions. Um, I do like him. I, he is pro small business. I mean, he's not perfect. There have definitely been a few times when he has said things that I did not necessarily agree with, or, um, and I'll talk about that here in a little bit, a little bit later. But, I mean, he's leaps and bounds better than David Garcia. I'm not gonna be interested in David Garcia. Now I do know, you know, there's a lot of people out there that education is their number one stance, and I am definitely in favor of education. I, I but I, you know, I don't believe in just giving money blindly to school districts without them, you know, deciding on what they're going to, you know, without any accounting, uh, with any, any accountability. Right now, these school districts just take this money and, you know, the government's like, oh, you know, we need to give teachers more money and the teachers beg for money. So we don't, as a state government, cannot give money directly to the teachers. It doesn't work that way. We have to give it to the school districts and then they have to decide to give it to the teachers. And just like the vast majority, well, not the majority, but a good chunk 
of this money that was supposed to go to teachers, the school boards have taken it and diverted it to, uh, you know, other stuff. You know, let's buy buses. Let's buy, uh, you know, tablets for people, you know, and, and various things. And I think they do that intentionally because they want to keep, as long as the teachers keep complaining, the school and the school board can get more money because everybody wants to give more money for the teachers. But the problem is the school board doesn't follow through and doesn't give that money to the teachers. And that, you know, the other problem is we're starting with two separate systems. We have the district system, which has been in place for, you know, 100 years. And we've started this charter school system. And now more and more um, kids go to the charter schools. And I think so many kids, you know, we'll fast forward a little bit here. I think so many kids are going to the charter schools now that, you know, four or five years ago when they had these bond elections, they were really, really close. And they had, in the last time a bond got approved, they had to manipulate the system and have it on a special election, on an election day when pretty much only teachers and parents went out to vote. And that's the only way they got that bond approved. The last time it was at a general election, it was not approved. And I think now that another 10% of the students in Peoria School District have now switched over to charter schools that have come up and, and started, including my kids go, now going to Legacy Traditional School, I believe that there's not a very a big chance of this bond uh, winning. Because if, if this bond wins, there's no more money for my kids' school. The money goes to the district system. And that district system, I mean, I go there. I, I mean, I've been to their meetings. I've seen how much money they waste and I'm not gonna just give them a blank check. Let's say, you know, here, here's a couple more million dollars. You know, I don't even know. Let's see, let's see. Here's 189 million dollars. Here you go. You can you can bill my taxes. You know, uh, you know, just charge me an extra hundred bucks a year on my taxes. And that's exactly what this bond override is. And you know, that's an extra hundred dollars a year or more for the next 20 years. Yes, it might add a little bit of value to my house, but it's also going to distract, de detract value from my house. I am a realtor, you know. I do understand how most of my buyers, they look at that property tax line and they're like, oh, well, you know, it's a little bit of property tax. The dif difference is here in Peoria, our property tax is pretty low, which is nice. We're much lower than Glendale because they're paying for all their mistakes that they did. Um, so let's keep going. Sorry. So on the next step, step, we have Rick Gray versus Kathy Kinnett. So Rick Gray is somebody I've known for a long time also. Um, he's very pro-small business. Um, he used to own his own small business. He was a plumber. I don't know if you all know that. So um, he's been in the Senate now for a little while, but he was also in the House, um, I think, for six years. And then he decided to um, get out of the House to run for Corporation Commission um, he did not win Corporation Commission, um, so he was free and available. And when uh, Trent Frank stepped down, Debbie Lesko went to uh, did her special election to go to the House of Representatives, and Rick Gray stepped in uh, for pretty much the entire 2018 year to fill in for Debbie Lesko's position. And now he's running to make it permanent. Kathy Connect was salivating to run against Debbie Lesko. And she was getting organized for that. Um, Kathy Connect has been on the school board for many, many years. And Debbie Lesko was on that same Peoria school board uh, for many years before Kathy Connect. And Kathy Connect is really a one-issue candidate. Um, honestly, other than education, I haven't really heard anything from her on anything. And yes, education is a big part of our government. But most of that's already done. We already know what we're doing with that. You know, we need to hear from her on how, what she feels about taxes and what she feels about, um, you know, autonomous driving, what she feels about the border and what she feels about, you know, all these different rules and regulations that the government has to do. If all she wants to talk about is education, yes, education is important, as I said before. But, you know, the, Rick Gray voted to give more money to education. He voted... Um, to give a significant increase for the education budget. And he's pro-education as it is. So, you know, I don't, you know, she wants to give a, get a, remove your school choice because 
she definitely stands for getting rid of charter schools. Um, I remember I was in a meeting with her personally. We actually sat at, at, next to each other at the same table, had, had a salad, and she was talking to me about um, how, you know, this was right when my kids were starting at Legacy Traditional School, and how she kept calling that the palace, and how it's this, uh, you know, palace of capitalism. And I was like, yeah, okay. Um, you know, she's very, very much against school choice. But school choice makes education better because it gives people a choice. So if, they, if these public schools and or district schools, because charter schools are public schools, if these district schools want to retain their students, they need to upgrade the quality of their education. So by having charter schools and having district by district choice and having all of this, it makes these schools much more competitive and much more aggressive to having better quality. And she wants to get rid of all of that. Um, she's against the voucher system for, you know, foster kids and poor kids and disabled kids. She's against the, um, you know, the, the voucher system for people who are going to F-rated schools and they need a way out and their parents want to want to see that. There's a voucher system, which we'll talk about more later. That's a, a Proposition 305, which was actually created by Debbie Lesko. Um, and she's against that. I would, you know... She's running as an independent because she really wants to get the independent vote because she knows dang well here in LD21, it's very difficult for a Democrat to win. It, ha it hasn't happened in decades. And we got Sun City, and it's very difficult for a Democrat to win here in LD21. So she decided to run as an independent. She's always been an independent, which is good for her. Fine, whatever. But she has been supported all the way by the Democrats. She's ran lock, stock, and barrel exactly in their position and where they where they do where their views are. So she might as well just say that she's a Democrat. So next state representative. So we have Kevin Payne, Tony Rivero, those are the two Republicans, um, Bradley Hughes and Gilbert Romero. So Bradley Hughes, uh, he's a doctor. He's a young um, he's young, younger, which is great. I'm young too, I hope. Not, I'm not as young as he is, but I mean, that's great for him. And um, he's actually old. I mean, even Tony Rivero is the youngest of the group, <coughs> as far as I know. So I haven't really heard much about Bradley Hughes other than he's very pro-education, pro-education. And then he um, released a couple videos bashing his opponents. Um, Gilbert Romero, though, yes. I have a flyer from Gilbert Romero here. I've actually talked to him in person, um, spent some time working with him. So he's for strong public schools, defending democracy, whatever that means. I think everybody else working, fighting for the working class, which is keywords for let's raise minimum wage even more. Let's give, um, you know, more rights. Of course, you know, he has the little logo right here next to his name that, you know, this had to be printed in a union shop because... You can't be a good Democrat and print your materials anywhere but a union shop. And <laughs> you'll see that. And if you look at Kathy Connect's flyers, she has that union shop logo on her stuff too. Uh, her, her, and the funny part is both Brittany, I mean, here we go, Brittany, let's see. I think she has it. Yep, right there. So whenever you see that logo, that means they're um, someone who loves unions. And to me... To me, government unions, the government shouldn't even be unionized. Even John F. Kennedy, a Democrat, said that, um, that the downfall of America will be government unions. Anyway, I'm not even going to go there. It's, it's way too big of an issue. So um, Kevin Payne's done a great job. He's come up with a couple uh, decent rules. Tony Rivero's tried really hard. I don't know if any of his bills have passed. Um, he's definitely come up with uh, a couple little tweaks to make some laws a lot better. Um, Tony Rivero did run here in the Acacia District. He was our uh, city council uh, representative for four years. Um, so, and now I think he's actually a pretty decent guy. So I'm going to be voting for Tony and for Kevin. Um, I definitely could never vote for Gilbert Romero. And Bradley Hughes, I mean, he's a Democrat. I don't know, other than education, I don't really know where he stands, but I do see how he um, 
went through and was bashing Tony Rivero quite a lot. Um, I just don't like that. So next, we're going to go to Secretary of State. I'm just going down in order here. Uh, Steve Gaynor versus Katie Hobbs. So this is just another thing. So Steve Gaynor, businessman, very successful. I mean, I looked up his information, and um, he owns business after business. And these are not just small businesses. These are like 10 and $20 million businesses or even larger. I mean, he owns businesses in multiple states. Um, he's He knows how to do it. And he's willing to take time to step aside from his businesses to be our Secretary of State. Um, he, he believes he can, you know, his main job is Secretary of State. Well, there's two main jobs. Uh, first main job is the, you know, the elections and making sure everything goes goes smooth for that. A uh, second main job is to basically be the um, in Arizona we don't have a vice governor or whatever they call it in other states, and the secretary of state is basically like the vice governor. If the governor um, something happens to the governor, the secretary of state steps in, and that happens way more than it should. <laughs> it's there's been in my lifetime I think four or five times where the Secretary of State has become governor. So I don't foresee that happening with um, Doug Ducey. I mean, I don't see any reason why he would step down in the next four years. Uh, so I really don't think that that's going to happen. But, of course, Steve Gaynor could run in four years for governor, which he might actually do. Uh, next, but I do think that he's um, – I've seen a lot of this of stuff that Katie Hobbs represents. Um, Steve Gaynor, you know, he isn't really – from Arizona. He spent most of his life somewhere else. He's been here for quite a while, but he's definitely not a native. I don't know if Katie Hobbs is or not. I didn't research that. Um, but I have read quite a bit about her. I, I won't be supporting her. Um, I don't think that I don't think that she's going to be the best one for the job. Um, I don't think she has the skill set. I don't think she's been to be at that high level of an office. She's never really ran anything even close to that size. Um, there's Mark Brendovich versus January Contreras for Attorney General. I've also been looking into this. Uh, January Contreras had some issue where uh, something wasn't reported about some elderly home a couple like a year ago. Um, there's been some, and she, oh no, a couple years ago, and she she's definitely a Democrat through and through. Uh, she worked um, on Janet Napolitano's administration. Uh, Mark Brenovich has been somebody who's fought up, fought, he has fought against um, the federal government in a few levels during the Obama administration about making the government um, take away our rights here in Arizona. Um, I definitely would support him. And one thing that I do know is about 90% of the caseload that they're going to be doing has absolutely nothing to do with politics. And it's going to be the same no matter which of these two people get elected. Uh, State Treasurer Kimberly Yee versus Mark Mansoit, Manuel. Okay. So Kimberly Yee worked in the Treasurer's office for a few years. She understands through and through. She's, you know, she's been in the Senate. She, uh, you know, she's going to get my vote. She understands what that's going to be about. Uh, Frank Riggs, um, he definitely was not my choice of the Republicans that were running. Um, he was, he did not seem very conservative. He actually seemed pretty much the least conservative of the Republicans who were running. But that being said, he's way more conserva conservative than what I've read about Kathy Hoffman. So that's who I'm voting for. And look at this, state mine inspector, Joe Hart. He's been in there for as long as I can remember. I don't really... I mean, they inspect mines. It's not a political position at all. But guess what? For the first time I I can remember, there's a Democrat running against him. That's cool. I don't know why. I mean, I don't think anybody's going to beat Joe Hart. He's been in there forever. So, Randy Glass, uh, Rodney Glassman and Justin Olson. So, uh, I've met both of these guys also. They're definitely supported uh, by various uh, leaders. Uh, I think Debbie Lesko has endorsed them both, or at least I know she's endorsed Justin. Um, Rodney Glassman, he's, he's, I mean, I've met him in person. He's really tall. I mean, I'm six foot four, and he's a good, you know, four or five inches taller than I am. And I'm 
you know, top one percentile already. So he's way out there. Um, but height doesn't matter. Um, so it's you get these two people, Sandra and um, I can't even say the other name, Kina Maria Sears. So I've read their information. All they're really standing for is being pro solar. Um, yes, I like solar. I think solar is good, but I don't think we should be forced to use solar. I think solar is, you know, it needs to be an economically viable solution. You know, we could give a couple little benefits here and there, maybe even put the put it in the favor of solar a slight a bit. But once we do it too far, then it's just increasing our cost of electricity. And that's why I'm against 127, which we'll get to later on. So, um, Clerk of the Superior Court, Jeff Fine has done an awesome job. There's no reason to replace him. Um, Justice of the Peace, there's only one choice, Don Watts. Um, no one even bothers running against him because he's done a great job. Lenny McCloskey, you know, he's the constable. Same thing. No one runs against him. He does a great job. He's really short. <laughs> he's cute. <laughs> anyway, so um, so now we're going to go to the nonpartisan ballot. Okay. Look at all these names for Cap Waterboard. So Cap Waterboard, Central Arizona Project, was an entity that was created a long, long time ago to help uh, to basically bring water from the Colorado River to the valley, to Maricopa County, to parts of Tucson, um, other parts of Arizona. It was this big federal government program, gosh, I think during the 1930s and 40s. So, and that program now brings over 50% of our water to uh, Maricopa County. So it's very, very important. Now, Cap Water Board, they are able to charge you how much, however much they want on your water bill, and you have to pay them because that's how it works. So do we want people in charge who are there, you know, every, I think no matter who you're going to pick on this list, they're going to be there to make sure the water gets delivered in a, you know, clean, timely fashion. So the rest of it's just on how do they run business? Are they going to be, you know, I heard rumors that um, before most of these conservatives took over, you know, they're spent, you know, Cap Water Board spends their money to pull races all over the place, um, political races one way or the other. Cap Water Board, you know, our, our mayor here in Glendale, I mean, in Peoria works for the Cap Water Board. Our previous mayor works for the Cap Water Board and gets tons of money from that. Um, they, they can spend tons of money, and this is money that they get from basically our water bills. So, of course, they're going to spend money to make sure our water bills are as high as possible. I mean, I, I, but then some conservatives got elected. Now, unfortunately, I don't have this part memorized. So I'm going to open up my little cheat sheet right there. So, let's find Cap Waterboard. So it says you can vote for five, but at this point, there's only really four people running that we would consider conservative. So April Pringner, Roy Van Pokey, Kerry, okay, God, are you really? Gain Gobley, and Lisa Atkins. So those are the ones that I would recommend. Um, I, I've talked to the people who created this list. I do like this list. And that's pretty much what this video is about, is reading this list over to you. So, um, I am. I do disagree with one thing on their list, so I will be getting there. Um, anyway, so also on this list, you also notice on the back of our ballot, there's all these judges. So if you want to, right here, we can see which judges that we think voted on for conservative principles, smaller government principles, and which judges also did a decent good job, you know, just being an all-around judge. Um, there's quite a few that are not on, I don't think, well, maybe th this list has everybody, but there's been a, hours and hours and hours of research has gone into this list. So you could pause this video, and when you're doing your ballot, go for it. Um, definitely vote yes for Clint Bullock. I've met him. He's a nice guy. Um, his wife's running in the district just east of us here in Glendale, or there in Glendale. We're in Peoria. Um, and John P. Lander. Now, these, these two votes, the reason we're voting yes on this is because they were bold and they threw out an education. They were to swing votes to throw out an initiative 
about education where they were just going to steamroll and try to ask for tons of money and set up all these new rules and their language was just horribly written. Um, it was a very, very bad law and it would have caused lots of problems if it was passed because of how poorly it was written. So Clint and John uh, voted to get it off the ballot. And the these education people who were very upset about that decided to target them. So we need to make sure that we definitely vote yes for these two people. The rest of these, even though we vote no, I've pretty much never seen any of the no's win because so many voters just vote yes down the whole list. Uh, there are voters I've also seen that vote no down the whole list. So that's up to you, but definitely for Clint and John, vote yes. Uh, the rest of this list, I'm not going to read it to you, but just there it goes. Uh, if you know uh, Kathy Herod, um, she's a runs this um, se oh, gosh. Center for Arizona Policy, CAP, which I wish they wouldn't call it CAP because that's Central Arizona Project. It's very annoying. But Kathy Herod runs that, and that's her husband right here sitting on the uh, Superior Court. So, and we'd also, and he's also been kind of targeted too by the by the other side. So we'd like to get make sure he votes. You vote yes for him too. So beyond that, we have the Maricopa County at large, which you're going to see that right here. And so these are not in my list. So, so you have these people are the actual ones of the um, at large. So if, if I remember right, we're supposed to I, um, Rock Arnett was the one that everybody was saying was the best one to vote for that. And Jean McGrath. So we definitely want to vote for Jean McGrath. She's a very vocal person here in the um, LD21. She's been in the House for eight years, the Senate for eight years. Um, she's ser served us on Cap Water Board. She's been serving us on the Maricopa County Board right now. And she's been a, a, a dog fighting for um, lower taxes. Um, and just getting rid of all this absurd waste that they've been doing over there in Maricopa County. <clears throat> so, Peoria Unified School Board. Now you could vote for, it says you can vote right here for two people. So what should you do about that? So definitely vote for Beverly Pingarelli. Because, you know, she's been on there a while. She's done a great job. She's the uh, conservative voice trying to save us money. And honestly, the thing is, if you vote for the second person, <clears throat> then you're giving votes to somebody on the other side who might be able to win against Beverly Pingarelli. So I just recommend voting, not voting at all on the other side. Just vote for Beverly, and that's it. <coughs> Sorry. So, of course, we're back to school board. My kids don't go to that school. Why should I give money to, to a school... The district that already has so much money, already has so much waste, they have more money than, than my kid's school does, and yet they perform worse than where my kid's school. Well, they actually perform pretty good. Um, if you, As a whole, they perform slightly worse than because my kid's school is really good. So um, I don't think they need more money. Uh, if they were to get more money, a lot of that's not going to go to teachers. That money is going to go to other things. And at this point in time, I'm voting no on that. And then, of course, we already covered the next one, Vicki Hunt versus Brittany. I'm voting for Vicki. So here's the yes and no's for that. So now we just have the quick little propositions. So 125, um, let me minimize this real quick. So 125 is basically just a little tweak to the public retirement system. And this has already been voted on uh, previously. Now, if you were to look on, there's a book here, What's on My Ballot. Now, this book, if you go to the um, Arizona Secretary of State website right here, you can actually get that book. And you get a PDF version of it. Now, you should have received this book in the mail. So, here's Proposition 125. And this was actually created originally, uh, for the most part, by Debbie Lesko and a few other people. It's one of the things she worked on. Now, it 
It changes the way corrections officers' retirement funds are. It's a very minor tweak. Um, the same tweak was done to police and fire department, like DPS, um, a couple years ago. It won. It it you know it passed with flying colors. Uh, most you know board of trustees is definitely in favor of it. I'm trying to find. They had the. What? So it says, if Proposition 125 is enacted by voters, it would replace the current permanent benefits increase with a new compounding cost of living adjustment. So it it basically tweaks um, tweaks how their pensions get paid. It's a pretty minor thing. I'm voting yes. 126. All right, let's, pass, let's go past all this stuff. So 126 is pretty lengthy. They say why we need this, but if you get down to the bottom. Basically what 126 does, and I'll read it real quick for you. You can read it there on the screen. Um, you can read it in your book. I mean, maybe maybe I'll make the screen bigger. Let's see, maybe. Let's see. So can we make this any bigger for y'all? A little bit. So 126 would amend the Constitution of, the, of Arizona to pr pr prohibit state city, town, county, or other political subdivision in the state from imposing any new or increasing any existing um, sales tax, basically, on services performed in this state. So that would, so I'm not going to go into the, the scary thing, but basically what this says is it's in the future, no government agency here in the state of Arizona can add any additional taxes on service. Now, they could have done this most likely without having a constitutional amendment. And because they made it as a constitutional amendment, there have been a lot of people on the other side that say basically don't mess with our Constitution. But the Arizona Constitution is messed with all the time. Um, there's three different propositions right now messing with it. Every two years, we change many, many, many things on the Arizona Constitution. It's not like the federal Constitution where it's a hollowed, sacred document. This is a a document that changes all the time. Um, but things that are in the Constitution are very hard to change, to remove, because it has to go back to the voters. So what this to me is, it's more money for more government control of small business. Because a lot of service businesses are small businesses. And a lot of small businesses are service businesses. And most of these businesses right now don't even have to have a sales tax license. They don't have to worry about it. They just go and they cut their hair. They groom their dogs. They do whatever they want to do. And they don't have to worry about it. But the arg the main argument to vote no, for so my argument for voting yes, is we don't want to put all this burden on all these people. We don't want to have to do that. The main argument for voting no is they don't like that the fact that it went in the Constitution. Even Republicans who are in favor of not increasing taxes, a lot of them want to vote no on this because, you know, they, they're always like, well, we need to leave our options open. What if we need taxes in the future? Well, in the, fu in the future, we can go back. But my thing, my what if is, what if 10 years from now, uh, Three million people from California move over to Arizona, and all of a sudden Republicans can't win a race, and the Democrats decide to start taxing everything. And that could happen. And this, acted on now, prevents that. Um, this was brought because of the realtors, which I am a realtor, full disclosure. Uh, <clears throat> and the realtors brought this because in other states, there, there's been talk about real estate services being had a sales tax on a sales tax on. So imagine you're a realtor and you're charging somebody a five thousand dollar commission to sell their house. Well, now that person who's selling the house might have to pay an extra five hundred dollars in a sales tax to each realtor, and that's for you know if, if their house is more expensive, they may even be paying more. So that's another transaction cost, uh, another friction in the market every time a transaction happens. So I personally do not want to see Proposition 126. It's, I mean, I don't want to see it lose. I want to see it win. Because I believe, you know, I, I really wish they didn't put it in the Constitution, but I think the value of it is protecting us in case we get invaded by liberals from California. And that is a very foreseeable thing. And But on the flip side, you know, right now, the other argument 
we're voting no on it because I want to be fully on both sides is because right now it is really hard to enact new taxes. In fact, no new service taxes have been enacted or even at the, at the state level in over 30 years. And it's very, very difficult to enact them at the state level. But what a lot of the people who are, talk about that and they keep focusing on the state level, state level, state level, is this also looks at the city level. And there have been cities. I heard recently Flagstaff is trying to get um, taxes on various services. And a lot of other um, cities that are in need of money are looking at taxing services, which, you know, it's going to be bad for those businesses because now they're charging tax. And if you have a city right on the right next door that doesn't charge tax, like so let's say Prescott decides they're going to charge tax and Prescott Valley does not. Well, people who want to do a service, they're going to say, well, I'll just drive the extra mile to Prescott and save $8 of taxes on this $100 service. Um, you know, if they get their car worked on or whatever it is. So, you know, yes, I understand that we don't want to charge taxes on services. And it is very, very difficult on a state level right now, the way, the way it's written, to do taxes. But we don't know how many Democrats are going to be moving here in the next 20, 30 years. But at the city and county level, it's, it's very, very, very tempting for these cities to go and try to get taxes from uh, services. So I definitely am voting yes on 126. I would hope that you do so also. So what's 127? 127, there's a lot of people, let's see, I don't even scroll all this. So here's where it looks like, yes, no vote. So 127, renewable energy requirement. Now this is, this is a really bad law. Um, this was paid for by straight up California liberals. And this is designed literally to make Arizona less competitive, to make those businesses want to stop leaving, those businesses and the people to stop leaving California and coming to Arizona because they're going to make Arizona worse than California when it comes to energy. And right now, California is almost triple what we pay in energy. And if we were to pass this law, it would make Arizona significantly worse. And this law is so unfair on so many levels. First off, they knew that if they wanted to, to tax everybody, it, it, so they, it, what it does is it basically requires a few of the large electrical companies to get a large amount, basically 50% of their electricity uh, from renewable resources. And they don't even count uh, nuclear as a renewable resource which is really weird. They also excluded specifically SRP be from this because they knew if they included SRP that SRP would fight against this tooth and nail and there would be so much um, ne negativity against it that there's no way this could even have passed in no matter what. Um, luckily, a lot of entities have stepped up, people from the left and from the right all over the place, saying that 127 is horrible. Uh, the polls are saying it's it's going to die. Uh, so basically right here, by 2030, they want 50%. And in order for, you know, it's, it's not even viable for electricity. It's pretty much impossible to produce that much electricity unless you're just wasting electricity because the electricity that solar creates is during the wrong time of the day. People use electricity in the mornings and in the evenings, but in the middle of the day, electrical usage goes way down and it creates this really bad problem. And so unless you have a way to store the electricity, you're creating electricity that you're literally going to have to just destroy. And it makes no sense. It, it's not a good law on any level. Um, if they included nuclear and they maybe made it like 20%, I might be, you know, but nuclear is already 20% by itself. So, you know, Anyway, and this, this, this chart here says what percentage actually has to be permanently installed on people's roofs. So 10% of the electricity has to come from people's solar on roofs, which, you know, roofs aren't really the most efficient way to do it. Uh, it's better just to put it out on some just giant ocean of solar panels out on some dirt field. Anyway, for many, many, many reasons, 127 is a horrible, horrible law. 
you know, anyway, so here's Rick Gray and Tony Rivera's websites. So you can see those. Cool. So there is the, um, so what else is there on the ballot? There's the uh, 305 and 306. So 305, we'll, we'll do that one first. So as I said earlier, there was this program that was created about two years ago. And the Democrats, uh, the program was to allow low-income kids and kids going to failing schools and kids that um, have mental issues to basically, if, if the school they're going to isn't working out for them, and if they're having some really major problem with that school, they can go and basically get a check that they can take that check to a private school and give that check to the private school. The private school also has to reduce tuition and give them a big discount. Um, so, you know, it's costing them money too. And then this kid can really get a leg up in society. And if you look at, if you talk to anybody who's taken advantage of this program, they're saying how it changed their lives. It changed the lives of their kids. Um, it's been a, it's been a godsend. It's been so awesome. But the um, the education unions and uh, teachers see that any money leaving their their grip, their uh, tight fisted grip, is bad, and so they're very very negative on this. They they think three hundred five is a horrible horrible idea. So what what happened? is they wanted to expand this and make it even bigger. Because uh, the first program um, only had, it was, it was supposed to be 12,000 kids, and every year it was going to expand by 1,000 more kids. And the teachers and all them, they were so mad that they basically stuck this thing in court, and ever since then it's been pretty much locked at 12,000 kids statewide. And we're talking on a state that has almost a half million kids. So 12,000, actually well over a half million. So 12,000 is a very small amount. And what this law will do is it'll make it where now it could be 40,000 kids instead of 12,000. And at the beginning, I was a little bit on the fence about this because one of the problems is I think it should be even more than 40,000. And if this law passes... It'll be very difficult to let it go ever go above 40,000. But if it doesn't pass, we're pretty much still going to be stuck at 12,000 forever anyway. And one thing that I was told by um, a few other, a few, Kevin Payne mostly, was that if this ever does, if this does pass, um, and it is locked at 40 million, I mean 40,000 students, that we can go and probably just create another similar program uh, in the future, and then be able to go above the 40,000. So I'm not really worried about that anymore, so I'm definitely voting yes on this, because I think it helps kids. And teachers, you know, I love, you know, we like our teachers, and we want the teachers to have more money, but the teachers union, unfortunately, is controlling them, and the teachers union is not about kids. The teachers union is not about getting better, higher quality education. They're, they are about getting more money for the teachers because they take a cut of that. And, and more money for the teachers means more money for them. And that's what they're about. And they're not about what's best for the kid in many, many cases. And unfortunately, I've talked to many very liberal teachers, especially at my kid's old school when they were going to the district program, and they were so brainwashed by these unions that they were doing things that were against the interests of their kids. And it got so bad that they actually walked out of school and canceled school so that they could protest. And to me, that was a travesty because that was totally against the interest of the kids. Anyway, I don't even want to go there. Sorry. <laughs> so uh, that was it. So number 306. It's a little bit confusing the way the language is done, but I actually know what it means. So I'm going to explain it to you. So, it, it's a little bit confusing. It basically says it's going to prohibit statewide and legislative candidates who receive public fi funding to finance their political campaigns from transferring campaign funds to a political party or private Texas exempt organization. So what this basically means is we created this clean election system a while back ago. And if you follow the rules of clean elections, the state government gives you, as a candidate, free money to run your election, your campaign. And what was going on is candidates, when this was over, 
they would take, you know, they would take that money and donate it to the Democrat Party. They would take it and donate it to some cause. Well, that's government taxpayer money. That shouldn't get donated to some cause that had nothing to do with what why they were running for office. So what 306 does is it basically says, no, at the end of your campaign, yeah, you can go take that money and spend it and do whatever you want. And at the end of that campaign, all that money goes back to the general fund. It goes back to the state of Arizona, which that's the way it should be. That should have been the way it was from get-go, but unfortunately it wasn't. Um, what this is going to stop is that there's been many occurrences recently where the way that the Democrats have been fundraising is they'll run somebody in a district that they know they have no chance of winning. Um, these people run in that district. They don't even try. They don't even market themselves. They don't do anything in that district to actually win. And they just give all the money to other races, which makes it, which is bad. So that's why I'm voting against that. So if you have any questions, um, hit me up on Facebook. I'm very happy to tell you about that. Um, here's a funny picture. Just don't vote for Homie. Homie is not a real candidate. This is a scam. This is some stupid um, business trying to get publicity, and they put up political signs as a distraction. So if you see those signs, make sure you boycott Homie. Like, never do business with them. Don't even go to their website. Just pretend they don't exist. Anyway, that's as a side note. <laughs> um, anyway, hope to see you on Election Day. I'm going to be working a polling place. Um, I'm going to be sending in my ballot right now. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Unfortunately, this video was very long. And I'm sorry for that. Thanks and have a good day. And if you stuck through it the whole way, oh my gosh, bravo to you. Thanks.